and to listen to our presentations. We really appreciate being able to sh share this experience with all of you because we have all these big experiences and we come back and we really want to give you an idea of what it's like to go out on these trips. Um, the longboat trip is four days long and it's always amazing to me to watch how much the kids uh, over the course of the four days really joined together, learned how to work and live as part of a group and um, I think really get uh, the experience of being outside and camping and enjoying you know, the perspective of being out on the water uh, in our beautiful islands. So I've been doing this trip for a few years. Um, I have really enjoyed it every year and um, I was glad this year to have along with me uh, Tim Dwyer uh, as co-leader and Chris Morris as well. And um, the kids, we're gonna play you a, a short iMovie uh, that Lily Tate made. And then, there's Lily, and then we're going to um, have some pictures going as we read some reflections uh, that we did when we got back uh, over the trip. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rita. Wait, talk to me. You said it was going longer. No, yeah. we'll watch this first. <laughs> much of our world to the background as we focus on the world on board ship. 
Now that I've worked my way along our coast, ducking in and out of eddies of wind and current, I've got a much deeper understanding of the components of our seascape. More details I'll look for the next time I ride the ferry. Sitting down in my hot car for the first time, I felt the closeness and space of being inside in four days. Then starting the engine and hitting the accelerator, the feeling of hurtling down the road in this little box, moving much more quickly than I could by my own power. For four days, I walked or rode or sailed, and now moving at a much quicker pace in the car, I noticed the speed and power of the gasoline driving my engine. Of course, the shower felt nice, washing away the four-day funk, but it also felt like I was washing off, washing off the trip, which was a little sad. And I always feel a little sad coming back because I realized that for three days I watched the sunset, which I don't often do at home. I also realized that the feeling of being inside instead of outside is kind of weird. It's comfortable, but it feels a little too hot. I've been acclimated to being in the weather, and now being inside, I feel a little uncomfortable with no breeze and no fresh air. Fresh air. I notice also that I wake up with a stuffy nose for the first time in a couple days. Sleeping in my own bed in my own house maybe isn't as healthy for me as sleeping in the fresh air. I also notice that I'm not waking up to natural sounds. My windows are shut so there's no honking geese, chirping birds, or the rustling of kids unzipping tents. I've been so active for these days, rowing, sailing, and moving about the camp on the island. I feel sloth-like just sitting on my couch. I have the profound experience of wanting to share this experience with others. When I walk into Demeter this morning, there are people going about their daily routine, talking on phones, reading news on their computers, drinking warm beverages, and eating buttery treats. I feel a sense of being different because I've been out on a boat and camping for four days, and I want to tell them to share what I've done to help us all feel gratitude for our comfortable life of hot drinks and climate-controlled rooms where little bits of paper buy you everything you need. I never really thought about the temperature of my house until yesterday. After the cold nights on the trip, sleeping in a warm bedroom was very different. So was sleeping on a mattress and pillow. I noticed all those everyday things that people take for granted. It made me think about the fact that not everyone has those things. I was only gone for a few days, but it felt like so much had changed. While I was rowing and sailing and daydreaming, the world outside of our small group was still spinning. So naturally, walking into my house was a bit of a shock. Stove, microwave, heaters, mirrors, and pillows. So many things I thought I couldn't live without suddenly felt pointless. I had been happy on the water, hadn't I? In a place where those things didn't exist? I saw all the little things of comfort that, for a few days, hadn't meant anything to me. Why do we make those things matter when we're happier without them? After the trip, I walked into my room, and it was like looking at a whole new world bright new colors, and I finally appreciated how easy I have it. And traveling on the ferry boat this morning made me think how fast everybody goes, not really realizing what an amazing place we have to live in. Yesterday I returned home and resumed my life with just a memory of this trip. It felt like everything sped up. For three days my life was in slow motion. The difference between traveling at 15 knots on a ferry and traveling three knots on a long boat is huge. On the long boat, you take the time to stare at the waves or watch the sunset. But on the ferry, everything speeds by in a blur. After going that slowly, when you return to your normal life, you realize all the things you don't take the time to notice. One of the worst challenges that I think many of us face was the pure misery of our first night on Jones. We were all soaking wet and cold and mad. Yes, we had a fire and we knew that the next day would be good, but weren't we supposed to stay in the moment? I think we overcame it the other nights, but that one night was not a good starter for a four-day trip. First night was freezing and wet, and I worried that that's how the whole trip would be. But the next day was blue sky and no rain. Hooray. <laughs> One of the 
challenges I faced on this trip was not having my friends with me in the beginning. I say in the beginning because by the end of our trip, I did have my friends with me. Before heading out on our little adventure, one of my biggest concerns was the fear of being alone. Most of my good friends were on a different trip, and I felt like I was being thrown into a group of people I knew the names of, but everything else about them was a mystery. But skip forward a week, and I've somehow ended up with people that I can call friends. A challenge that I faced when I was free climbing a wall of big rocks, and I was three quarters up above all the sharp rocks and water. I just froze and couldn't fly into a foothold. I reached down, I reached up, and Chris was holding Tim's legs, and everyone else was holding Chris's legs. Tim got, I got successfully pulled up, and I was so happy to see my friends and be on flat ground and not dead. was watching the sunset on Blind Island. We were all sitting on a picnic table wrapped in our sleeping bags. I remember it being bright yellow close to the mountains and then it turned orange and reflected off the clouds lighting up the sky. We sat on that picnic table and watched it sink <laughs> until we were surrounded by darkness. What I look forward to is definitely going sailing this summer any chance I get. I love the, fit, the feeling of the tiller vibrating under your hands because of the speed, the commands to tack, and that blessed moment when you lower your anchor and return home. During the duration of this trip, what I enjoyed the most was sitting around a campfire, sharing thoughts, and listening to Faith sing on a blind island. At the beginning, I just wanted to get out there and start rowing. When John and Naja said that it was the last day, I wish we could have spent one more night on Blind Island. The sunset there was incredible. This trip was an experience. There were ups and downs in every day, rising and falling like the waves we learned to love. There were events like Crystal getting stuck on a cliff, and there were events like the perfect sunset on Blind Island. When it comes to describing this trip, the only word I can think of is unforgettable. Unforgettable like the rain on the first day. Unforgettable like the fear I felt each time our boat tipped to one side. And unforgettable like the sound of people screaming when a spider was found in one of the tents. <laughs> but it was also unforgettable like the warmth of the sun after the rain finally stopped. It was unforgettable like the sound of a slightly out of tune ukulele being played next to a campfire and it was unforgettable like all of the unlikely friendships that were formed. So I'm taking this trip and all of its unforgettable moments and memories and ups and downs home. I'm looking forward to all the friendships that were formed on this trip. I'm glad I'm on the trip now because if I hadn't, I wouldn't know these people as well as I do. Thank you to Nikki, Tim, and Chris for like making this wonderful trip happen. Thanks for listening. Um, we do not have any trip leaders here today, so I decided I would speak for you guys to some <laughs> I believe one of our trip leaders is in Cuba and the other is in Seattle right now. We did not plan anything, but it will go. Where to start from the beginning of this trip? From getting a flat tire from the very beginning. We got delayed by like four hours in this parking lot. That was a great way to start the trip. Um, once we got our tire fixed, we started heading out. And we left, we left home pretty much when we got out of like cell phone reception. And um, like when we ran out of food pretty much. We got out on our first night. We hiked five miles and it was already very muddy because the, we were on the Ho River where it rains 166 inches of rain per year. So we were walking through about six inches of mud on the first day. We got to the first night, it had been raining for 32 hours straight. And we got there the first night, it was really fun. We explored, but it was pouring out of rain. That night we learned our tents weren't waterproof. Um, we slept, we got wet, 
the, the guy's tent, we had four people in one tent, so we were half outside the tent most of the night. The second night, we hiked down even farther. By now, the trails are turning into like, you know, one to two inches of water. Like, not very much, but you know, we, were, we, were, we can do it. So we kept on hiking. And still pouring down rain. We get there, you know, we saw a black bear, like maybe like from like me to the edge of that wall. Really fun for a lot of people to see. Um, it, was, it was very fun. That night was really rememberable. I think that's the right word, rememberable. Um, but because um, that night it was on a huge river where you could literally walk for a mile down the river. It was amazing. And that's what we did. We explored the river. Um, that night we attempted to set up a fire, but the, you know you could you can't have fires in the rain. It just doesn't work very well. Um, so we woke up that morning again in rain. Right? It's still pouring down rain. It hasn't really stopped. And then it's about 5:30 in the morning because the sun's coming up. It's raining. It's cold. It's wet. Um, all the kids were up and we're huddling, like pretty much in a penguin circle. Like we're like, you take turns in the middle underneath this tarp. And we're under there, we're freezing, we think we're gonna die. You know, it's not really going too well. And then the only second worst thing that could happen, it starts snowing. <laughs> and this is legitimate snowflakes. Like the way, like snow on the sound is not real. Um, for, about, uh, for about two hours, it was raining, it was falling snow. You couldn't really see. <laughs> and, yes, yes, it was It was coming down so hard, in that two hours, it snowed about two, three inches. And we decided, we can't go back. We, like, cannot keep on hiking out in the woods. So, we get our leaders awake, and we decide to hike back ten miles instead of doing five, like usual. Nice. 9.6. <laughs> We, um, we start hiking back, and we learned pretty much that there was no trails, really, anymore. <laughs> I wanted to build a raft. <laughs> we, um, they say your boots are waterproof, but then you try hiking in the whole river. <laughs> like, we were in the river. Like, nine inches, nine to ten inches of water. We were hiking through the entire water. <laughs> It was, it was really a really fun experience. We actually we hiked halfway down, and most of us thought we'd gone about like seven miles. We were down the hike in three miles. We were about three miles in. Um, we, so we stopped for lunch, and we got into an a, a emergency shelter, actually. We stopped in this emergency shelter and had lunch, and it was really nice, and we kept on hiking, and we kept on pushing. And like a lot of people have talked about in this presentation, like, you know, seeing the beautiful surroundings you're in, really taken in. It wasn't really like that. I mean, really like that. <laughs> but um, you're, you have no warm clothes. You packed light, because you remembered last year that it wasn't that wet, so you like, didn't pack very much, you know? Um, and so you're hiking, and you're trying to bring in the surroundings, but then, like, a pound of snow falls on your head. <laughs> um, we had some, we had some really like, my, one of my favorite parts of the trip was experiencing, that's probably a lot of people's least favorite parts, was so there were a couple, like the river was like flowing so much, a couple trees had like fallen down. And so we had to crawl over because the bridge was like gone or something. And so, and there was about a, like, okay, that's probably not close enough, like a couple inches of snow covering an icy, and it's a big river, like, and it's very slippery wet logs. And a lot of people, like, I'm sure were very nervous, and like, that was the least favorite part of the trip for me, that was the best. We got to experience what it was like to work together as a group and get everybody across, from the, you know, we got every single person across safely, and that was really one of my favorite parts of the trip, getting everybody across. And so we kept on hiking, you know, river rafting. Um, we kept on going, and we went, and we went, and we went. I would keep on going and saying went for a long time. And you just kind of, you keep just, you're moving. And we experienced, we experienced some hills. We didn't actually know that the first night. Like, did we not know that we were going to have to go up them at some point? Because we were like, it felt like we were going straight up. And when we finally got back to the van, I think most of us, we ran to the bathroom with those heater things, you know, those hand heater things, and we like, just like warmed up in them, and just, that was like the last, like, that was like the last way to get warm, the hand heaters in the bathroom. And so, 
But actually, this when we got snowed out, it kind of turned a new side to our trip. Because after that, after we couldn't hike anymore, we got to go to Nia Bay, and we went to Ruby Beach. And those are really memorable moments in my life. Like, we got, we got on the bus, and we drove to a town. And we got some food, you know, we learned how to, like, weave baskets and from uh, Harvest Moon. And but then, that, that second day, that second day, we went to Ruby Beach, Ruby Beach for a day hike. And that was really, really beautiful. You, we walked down to the beach, and you could just see for like a mile out to the water. And there's big rocks, and we just started walking. And, you know, there were like some times when like, that, that day was actually really wet too. Like we were, we were still really wet. There was not a dry moment on this trip. I don't know, we should, I mean like if we're gonna feel lucky about something, it's not my bed, it's that we're under a rain shadow. Like, that's something lucky we're having. <laughs> So we get off the beach, and that, that was really a great day. And we, okay, here's where it gets interesting. We, we get to our hostel for that day. And we walk in, and the kids are staying, and we don't really know what's going on, because we're in the van. We've been in the van for like 30 minutes. And the, the leaders are in the house, and we don't really know what's going on, because we're all cold and wet. And so we get inside, and this is kind of this like, kind of old man, like kind of, maybe he wasn't that old, but he was like, we're kind of old. And <laughs> we, we got in the house, and he starts very quickly, he starts putting his chair. So like, okay, I just have a three, I have a three part speech, I have to tell you guys about just my life story. And I'm like, okay, we're gonna hear your life story now. Okay. <laughs> and so we all get like put into these, like get into like these couches in his living room. He's kind of a hoarder. This is, keep in mind, there's like stuff in there. <laughs> and so, we sit down and he starts telling us, you know, it got very, um, you know, what's the word? Oh, it got political really quick. <laughs> this, he's a big, he's just a really political guy. And you know, he has like some, like, he's like, I don't, I don't know, I shouldn't start really talking politics now, but. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we get, we get his life story, and then we get shown to our rooms. I don't know what the guy's room really was, because they were like, Stuff, pictures of stuffed dogs all over our walls. <laughs> and it was interesting, because like, well, it, it, was, it was really fun, because we got dry, we, you know, we got dry, we had food, and we got dry, and we, we went on the next day, and we had a night, and everything went perfectly. You know, the one memorable moment for all of us was listening to, I think it would be called tribal music. I think that's what it's called. So he had very many, he had lots of big speakers. And he had, I, yeah, I think that's right, we're tribal music. And like, he was like turned up really loud until about like 10.30 at night, was it? About when he turned it off? And we were just listening to really intense tribal music. <laughs> and so that, that ends, and we finally fall asleep. That was awkward. What? That was awkward. No, it, was awkward. it wasn't awkward, it was tribal. <laughs> <laughs> and so we wake up that day, and we do, uh, a nice day hike to Pony Bridge, and then we come back down, and that's the last day, and we started to have a drive home. Well, actually, no, we didn't drive home that day. We had one more day. We had one more day. We had one more day. And so then we drove some more, and raided some more, and we got to the Solda Hot Springs, which was really, really nice to be able to go jump in a warm hot spring, you know. A lot of us experienced, like, the, like there's a lot of dead skin floating around, but it was still very nice. Um, after we soaked for a couple hours, because we were ahead of schedule, we went and had a nice dinner, and then got back in our tents. Um, a memorable moment for me was, for the last, like, three nights, me and the guy's tent, because we were getting wetter inside the tent somehow. Like, it's, like, trapped more water inside the tent. So we were sleeping outside, actually. Um, it was just a drier way to go. <laughs> it, I, it doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't make sense. Okay. And, um, but we're on a hill. We were on a hill. And we set our tent up to dry it because we were under rushed trees. And we were up here on the hill. And we woke up in the morning inside our tent and we're like, what's going on? Did we do this on purpose? But we actually slid down in the night. <laughs> And I'm not sure what's going on, but we ended up in our tent at the end. <laughs> um, and then that mo morning, you know, we um, we got uh, drove and we drove and we got to Port Townsend and we had um, delicious pizza and walked around Port Townsend for a while. 
and then got on the ferry from Port Townsend to Fidalgo Island, and then drove and got on the ferry and came home. And it was a really great trip. And we got back to the parking lot, and everyone was really excited to see their parents, and everyone was excited to be home. But we're um, for sure that trip's going to be in, like, on my side, in my memory forever, for sure. <laughs>
The Library of Congress is entrenched in mythical beings, both historically ancient and culturally imagined by the artists and designers. One could feel the passion and belief of our founding fathers in a country that firmly stands for equality, education, and justice for all. Viewing statues of Martin Luther King Jr. and women suffragettes remind all of the pain, struggle, and victory of the constant evolution our country experiences as we strive towards the manifestation of our four parents' dream. The African American Museum is the most upbeat and hopeful museum I've ever experienced. The prolific and diverse creativity of the people that have been so oppressed in our American culture was deeply moving and profoundly inspirational. All angles of life are depicted from the craft of daily tools, word and song, to physical expression of the human body in dance and sports. The African American Museum is an expression of yes we can and with beauty and integrity. Next I'd like to introduce our student trip leader Nathan. I was the student leader on this trip. I was in charge of the boys, doing stuff like what, waking them up in the morning, making sure they stayed on the, with the group while on the street, and they didn't get distracted on their phones on the subway. <laughs> Guiding them by the straps of their bags and the napes of their necks, listening to their music, and trying to get them to bed before midnight. I watched them as they made their choices and had to deal with the consequences. <laughs> I saw how they grew mentally and made better decisions, how they took responsibility for their actions. I saw the effects of the city's sites, museums, and memorials on them. I'm glad I was able to be part of this trip. It was a new experience for me, and it was interesting to visit another place where I would not have normally gone. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Linnea. I have so many amazing memories from this trip. I decided to talk about some of my favorites that are all connected by a series of pictures my friends and I took in these Lorax t-shirts we got. We got them because they said, I speak for the trees, and we really liked that message. Our first picture was taken at the Hart Building, which is where lots of the senators' offices are, and the start of our Capitol tour. We got inside, and the humid heat greeted us. Everyone was dying to get to air conditioning, but we made them stop and wait for us to throw in our t-shirts and pose for a picture. We took some photos at the National Mall. The Washington Monument is in the middle of the mall. It's so tall that when I stood at the base, I couldn't even see the top. The Washington Monument is the tallest building in DC, which makes it seem even taller. We also took some pictures in New York. We took a picture coming back from the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. The Statue of Liberty is incredible. Standing on the pedestal, you lift your head and you're looking directly up at this iconic figure towering above you. I thought it was really cool to get a picture with such an important figure in the background. Ellis Island is unbelievable. So many people have ancestors who went through there, including me. Standing in the Great Hall, I could almost see the lines of immigrants waiting anxiously, wondering how long it would be until they got through to their future. We also took a picture on the High Line. That's a park that's built on this old train rail, so it's elevated. I thought it was fun to have a photo with all the flowers behind us. It reminded me of home. Thank you. In New York and DC, we went, on, we went to a lot of museums, which was great. But all I really wanted to do was play some basketball on the trip. Luckily for me, Brian, Rayleigh's mom's friend, heard me blabbing on and on about how I needed to play some basketball. So the next day, Brian and I went out looking for a pickup game. We ended up at a court with a bunch of games in progress. As we waited to get into the next game, I started warming up and listening to all of the street talk, which I loved. Once the game started, I was a little intimidated and nervous. This made my game struggle, and I got embarrassed on defense. But the last game, my teammate told me to just keep shooting and not to be scared. This allowed me to have confidence and to play at a higher level. I airballed my first shot, but I kept shooting. After that, I started shooting the lights out, keeping my team in the game. My favorite play is where I got open from three. As my defender ran out to contest my shot, I drove past him, heading towards the paint. As their center waited for me, 
I went up for the layup. He went up to block me. I released the ball. The ball went floating over his fingertips and swishing into the hoop. This is how I earned their respect. I want to thank my teachers, Irene and Taylor and Nathan, for keeping me in line, but still allowing us to enjoy ourselves. And of course, a huge thank you to my class for helping me make memories that will last a lifetime. Although there were a few areas that were more important to me, like food and the Broadway play, come from away. We got to experience food from all over the world, like Ethiopian and Turkish. My favorite, however, was the sushi from Noriko and gelato from Patongo Gelato. The Broadway show also interests me. The show was a musical that took place during 9-11, where planes were ordered to land immediately. 38 planes landed in New Finland, a small island in Canada, where the population was less than 10,000. Locals were forced to make accommodations for 7,000 more people. They did it in such a selfless manner. Parts of the Broadway show correlated with the trip, and that was really cool. Um, I'm Monin, and uh, I love the food part of our trip. I got to experience all different types of food. Ethiopian, sushi, Mexican, gelato, Thai, Turkish, gourmet sandwiches and wraps, fancy pizza, and crab cakes. I tried Ethiopian, Turkish, and calzones for the first time on this trip. Ethiopian was my favorite fruit, food. We ate with no utensils, instead using the spongy bread called injera. You pick a little piece of the bread off and pick up either eggplant, cod, chicken, beef, or beans. It is amazing, that is now one of my favorite foods. At the sushi, sushi restaurant, I got California and tempura rolls. It was so good. At the Thai restaurant, I got yellow curry, and it was the best I've ever had. When we got gelato, I got a half and half of mango and coconut. It was so tasty and refreshing because it was so hot out. At this restaurant called Bourbon, we got these little crab cakes, which I ate so many of. The crab was delicious. And after that, we went to this Mexican restaurant and got churros and pupusa for dessert. It was the first time I had tried pupusa, which is like a savory pancake, and now I'm hooked. At this place called Cats, Sonora and I shared a huge pastrami sandwich with pickles. And the pastrami was amazing. It melted in your mouth. It was so good. Felix and Wesley and I got a margarita pizza, which I love. And after that, we were so hungry, so we got calzones. It was the first time I've had those, and they were so good. I'm so happy I know about those now. Overall, the food was amazing, and I'm so glad we got to experience that. Thank you, Taylor and Irene and Nathan, for taking us along on this trip. And thanks to my class for making it such a fun time. for my presentation. Holocaust, destruction or slaughter on a mass scale, especially caused by fire or nuclear war. For my presentation, I chose the Holocaust. I didn't choose this because it was the most fun, but because it was the most impactful. It told stories of real people and what happened to them. Before we saw anything, we got identification cards with the story of a person that experienced the Holocaust. My person was named Susie Hilsenrath. And in the end, her, she and her family re were reunited in the United States and lived in Washington, D.C. The tour began on the fourth floor. On each side of the walls, there were pictures and stories about when and what happened during the Holocaust. There was this part where they were examining people's eyes to, and hair color to see if they were Aryan or alien. We walked through each exhibit and down each set of stairs. The most impactful thing to me was the shoes. There was this room, and on each side there were shoes old shoes, and on the wall there was this quote that read, we are the shoes, we are the last witnesses, we are the shoes from grandchildren and grandfathers from Prague, Paris, and Amsterdam. Because we are only made of fabric and leather and not flesh and blood, each one of us avoided the hellfire. was the amazingly diverse food. We ate Ethiopian food, Turkish food, Thai food, Mexican food, hamburgers, pizza, and gelato. The Ethiopian place we went to in Georgetown is called Das Restaurant. The food is delicious, and we got to eat with our fingers. 
In Ethiopia, they mostly eat with their fingers, but sometimes they use utensils. Well, in New York, I was able to get together with my aunt. We went to dinner at a place called Market Table. The reason we went to Market Table is because Maggie knew the owner. That was my favorite food over the course of the whole trip. I had crispy chicken and Maggie had this steak. After dinner, we had, we had hazelnut cheesecake. I have discovered that New York and DC are great places to try, to try new and exciting foods. Thank you. Today, I decided to talk about the Capitol Tour. My class and I were stunned by the beautiful architecture and artwork that hung all over the walls. My favorite part of the tour was looking up and seeing the painting that covered the ceiling. The painting was meant to symbolize Washington being welcomed to heaven. The painting made you feel as though you were Washington himself, flying high above the clouds to find heaven. I recognized the artwork on the walls that I had seen in previous history textbooks. <laughs> the walls had been carved and chiseled to look like you were walking through different dimensions as you walked through the Capitol. The artwork seemed like it was bursting from the walls, the colors so vibrant yet worn down by age. The Capitol was packed with people, and voices bounced off the walls, echoing over the whole room. People were either busily trying to get to a different place, or they were staring dumbfounded at everything around them. But even though there were long lines and lots of people, I would love to go back and experience the Capitol tour over again. Also, a thank you to these people for how all the great times. I can't wait until next year. Okay. My favorite part of the trip was the 9-11 Memorial Museum because it was a beautiful building in the middle of the two memorials. It had many artifacts that were really there and part of that nation-shaping event, like the fire truck that was sheared in half by debris and a piece of the antenna from the North Tower. Each piece like this had a story behind it, and it was really moving to relive that experience through the object. Probably one of my favorite parts of the museum was the hall. Probably one of the most impactful parts of the museum was the hall with all the photos of the people killed in the attacks. It was really insane just to see it all in one place. One of the highlights of the trip for me was the memorial site above the ground, because when you got uh, out of the subway and walked down a few blocks, there was construction blocking off the nearby roads, so it was really quiet, and you could just hear the water hitting the bottom of the, moment, of the outline of the tower. It was a really cool experience you can't have anywhere else in the city. Just quiet and peaceful, something I will never forget. Thank you. DC, New York was an amazing trip. Primarily, I liked the art. The National Museum of Art was my favorite place we went. The Smithsonian created an amazing thing and they deliver it free of charge. The Smithsonian is an amazing organization and they have great collections and experts delivering the history and culture to the people. Another thing I love seeing is how different cultures paint and portray events, especially different areas and art movements of Europe. One of my favorite paintings was the Assumption of the Virgin by Nicholas Poussin. It was breathtaking. The use of texture and value made it feel as if you were seeing the painting like it was real life. The detail of the angels and clouds were so well created that they had me in awe. Another detail that I considered to be art that I enjoyed was when we saw all the architecture on the buildings and statues throughout both cities. I really enjoyed this trip, and I would like to thank Taylor, Spring Street, and Irene for the experience. I really like the World War II and World War I exhibits in the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. I enjoyed them because the exhibits had the aircraft and detailed descriptions of the weapons they were equipped with. I loved the Nazi jet that was there too. I liked it because it was one of the last intact models of that jet left in the world. It was the first jet ever made and it had a lot of problems at first with the engine and the design. After the Nazis figured out how to fix the problems, they started producing them as fast as they could, but it was too late to change the course of the war. The jets were used primarily as light bombers and fighters at the end of the war. 
the jet outclassed any of the Allied jets that were being experimented on at the time, like the RAF Gloucester Meteor. The Gloucester was the first Allied jet to be produced, and it's not nearly as aerodynamic as the Nazi one. In the World War I exhibit, they had a model of a bomber. It was very cool to see how it was used strategically and to see what it was like to be a pilot of a big and slow moving bomber during World War I. It's amazing to see all this for free, and I could have stayed there all day long if we had the time. I loved the entire trip, and I'm looking forward to going on more, more trips with this class. by in a hurry, unlike the islands where it's peaceful and you can listen to the wind rustling the trees. In the city, you listen to people chatter, car horns, ambulance sirens, and the patter of people's feet passing by. The air filled with the smell of garbage and smoke became stronger with each step I take. Compared to the fresh, clean air of its islands, the city lights are so bright you can't see the stars when you look out your window. Where at my house, if you looked out the window, you could see hundreds of stars going on for miles. As I walk, I think about my family in the city and how big it's compared to the islands. As my mind wanders even more, I think about how we shouldn't enclose ourselves to the islands, how we should explore the world, learn about different foods, cultures, and people. Wednesday, May 24th. We went to see the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. We went on a ferry, it made me think of home. Looking at Lady Liberty from far away makes her look so small, but she brings with her a powerful message. I listened to the audio tour when we got to the island. I heard stories, it was incredible. Beauty in its unique, exquisite way paints a picture in my mind and forms a memory. Immigrant, a person who comes to live permanently in a foreign country. People from all over come to settle in a new place. They feel scared, overwhelmed, excited, and nervous. I can't not even imagine how hard it is for them to paint a new picture, write a new chapter in their lives. This is all the feeling the Statue of Liberty conveys, a welcome from the beautiful lady standing on a pedestal. When immigrants see her for the first time, they cry, hug, kiss, and say, we have come to America. This means they have almost finished their journey, almost gotten to their destination, but not yet. Newly arrived immigrants travel to Ellis Island to the registration room, a giant hall with a vaulted ceiling. They come to be granted or denied entry into the United States. Crowded conditions, people waiting and children crying, anxious after anxious moment pass by. All these stories gave me insight to what it might have felt like to be an outcast, a fugitive, a refugee, or a running man. How hard but meaningful it is to keep this important part of our history alive. I love the stories. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed all of the stories. And up next, there are Kim and Nikki. 